Today on Gamer's Couch, Dark Tales, Little Red Riding Hood. Once upon a time, there was a little girl. Her name was Little Red Riding Hood. She felt quite alone as a kid because her past favorite, past favorite, mm -hmm, her favorite pastime was playing board games and nobody wanted to play with her. She was always winning. But then one day she met a boy who seemed to like her and played board games as well. She asked him, what's your name? And he said, what, Daniel. What do you mean with wins all the time? Before I met you, I was quite good at winning board games. <laughs> Welcome to the couch, everybody. Happy Sunday. I, I don't like this story. It, it <laughs> had a good really... start, but then... <laughs> because it's real. But then some fantasy realm stepped in and said, <laughs> winning all the time. No, that was me before I met you. Mm. Happy Sunday. Like I said, welcome to the Gamers Couch. This is Daniel, the boy I met who I screwed up my score when it came to winning board games. My name is Sarah. I'm the artist behind Pencil Geschichten. And happy, I guess, end of Tabletop Day because today is Tabletop Day. That, that we means recorded. if you see this tomorrow or now, if you see, probably now is not Tabletop Day anymore. Maybe West Coast Hawaii time. Because it West could Coast be really like the last couple of, although no, no. Uh, West Coast is three hours, uh, three a.m. in the morning that we publish this video, and I don't know what Hawaii time is there, yeah. even further away than if, West Coast. If you're not living somewhere further west from Francisco, Hawaii, you probably it's too late. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, we cannot change the world. But we're talking about Little Red Riding Hood today. And uh, the book that I read uh, the story from is actually my old uh, grim fairy tale book. And let me show you something before I put it away. If anybody finds that the cover that we showed in the thumbnail is kind of sexist, this, let me show you what the, what the girls looked like in 1979. Uh, in Eastern Germany, you can look under Little Red Riding Hood skirt back then, even so, it's not a sexist game. I, but at least she had. She has a, a cool tattoo. At least she had a skirt. Yeah, this is kind of. Kind of like. This is this is not really a skirt. This is more like a pretty white belt or something. Well, let me see. Two hundred and seven. See, it's it's just as as short. Anyway, actually, the wolf looks way more like an owl bear than a, a wolf, <laughs> or a wolf. As, a wolf, as as people say. As people say. <laughs> Let's get started. We are talking about uh, Dark Tales, Little Red Riding Hood. He will start explaining you the rules and general gameplay. Then we talk about what we liked or not liked and finish up with some ex experiences and funny stories. And we give you a teaser for the last draft initiative before the podcast season starts. All right. Go. Honey, I sip coffee and look kind of nice. First and foremost, uh, this is the expansion to Dark Tales, uh, which still Ooh. is really difficult to say without coming Having, saying DuckTales. Um, DuckTales and the wolf. I won't go into the, the base rules. Um, I We made a video about that. You made, It's in the iCards. It's, no, it's up, up above your head, I think. It's here. No, in the corner of the screen. Can you? Yes, that's more like it. Click here. Anyhow. So... Little Red Riding Hood is uh, essentially just a, a bunch of new cards that you will mix into your already existing cards. Uh, a new type of token that is available. These baskets out of... Oh, yeah, there's, I was checking if there's basket on the same side. But yes, there are. Um, these baskets that uh, trigger new things. And uh, two new story cards, which is weird because... Both are B only. 
which brings us directly into the rules. Now, uh, to set this game up, you actually play with an A and a B card from the base set or the um, Snow White uh, ex expansion. Is it Snow White, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, the yeah, one with the apple Snow and White. the dwarves is um, Snow White. And then you add one of those B cards, so you essentially end up with three cards that change stuff uh, around. Uh, obviously, these deal mostly with the baskets that come in this game, and they are pretty much like baskets are either worth money, or um, if you have this amount of baskets, you get uh, these amount of other tokens of your choosing at the end, or plain victory points. In this case, uh, for example, this says score four victory points for each basket plus gold coin you hold, uh, bringing a little bit more or a different dynamic to the game depending on what other kind of objective story cards you're choosing. But yeah, just expanding. So where I would say Snow White kind of added more stuff, but kept it in the same amount of stuff you would do uh, for a particular game. This <coughs> one tries to broaden a single game a little bit with having additional things to score points and uh, mix these cards in. Um, these are also pretty much all the cards, uh, in, and there's the Little Red Riding Hoods, that uh, come in this uh, box. Uh, obviously, there's more than one copy of each card, but they're not that many. In fact, you just splice up your base deck with these cards, uh, depending on how many people are playing. Um, and then you will have these new little red riding hood cards in here that also have uh, a little icon down down here indicating that it's from the expansion and also giving you a hint how many of those cards are in the game so it's a little basket i guess it's difficult to see that says four in this case so we have all of the usual suspects that you would expect from a little red riding hood you have uh, the LRRH herself, which uh, is pretty much how this card is referred to by other cards. So uh, get used to that. Um, there's only one Little Red Riding Hood in the entire game, and she has a kind of special function. I'll get to that in a moment. Other cards are the Wolf, more Wolf, but in disguise, Huntsman, Mommy, whatever, Mommy. Grandma? No, mommy. Oh. Grandma. Oh, her mom. Yes. She sends her to grandma. Just one location because pretty much everything happens in the forest. And, well, just one kind of true action card. Uh, these pretty flowers. And that's pretty much it. But that's all the usual suspects you would expect from uh, a Little Red Riding Hood game. Now I said... Uh, Madame here herself is quite important, and that is because she is already out when the game starts. And uh, if I read the effect to you, it might become clear why she's a little bit special. This says, if you play a male or female card, draw one card. If you pr uh, play a place, score one victory point. If you play an event, take one basket from the supply. And if you uh, have a villain... Oh, I have played a villain. You must pass Little Red Riding Hood to your left, and you may play one additional card this turn. So she'll stay in front of you and, uh, well, give you some extra bonus depending on what other combo you want to play, um, which, ha well, has some interesting things to it. It's, um, since we mm. majorly play with two players, this is a really, well, then combo heavy thing. Do I want to, what, kind of card do I want to play apart from the effect of the card if Little Red Riding Hood is in front of me? Can I maybe chain cards in a clever way or form to have her in front of me get the bonus and then get her back in front of me or prevent the other player from, from getting that? Um, in fact, there's quite a lot of cards that interact with Little Red Riding Hood in here. Um, for example, the Bad Wolf card, which is a new villain, and uh, the Bad Wolf gets to eat female cards and you gain victory points instantly for doing so but he'll also generate a victory point for each grandma he has eaten and uh the, the same for little red riding hood so bad wolf is actually a way to remove that 
special combo possibility by just well eating little red riding hood um obviously there's a huntsman that uh, says uh well score one victory point for each wolf in play discard one bad wolf in play and put the eaten cards in front of you so you have to play the huntsman to get uh, the red riding hood back again um but it's not only the bad wolf that is running around there's also the disguised wolf running around which is an action card um and this says choose one card in play or in hand until the end of turn it counts as another type of your choice um you may have guessed it a lot of these cards kind of will amp up the combo possibilities and this is like your new wild card that amplifies whatever other card you want to play which is especially powerful with all those cards that say for each villain in play for each uh, location in play and so on and so on then there's obviously some cards that uh, give you the new basket token. In this case, uh, we have a mommy here. Um, we have a grandma here that just gives you victory points for each basket you hold. It's kind of a stretch, but that goes well, close to the story, so to speak. Um, and then you have the forest, uh, which uh, says you can take uh, a pretty flowers from the discard pile or take a basket from the supply and may play a wolf. And last but not least, the pretty flowers. Uh, you put Little Red Riding Hood in front of you. You may play one additional card in uh, this turn. So that's the card I was referring to in regards to how you want to combo th things. Uh, for example, Little Red Riding Hood lets you play a, uh, an additional card. You might play this one to get her back in front of you. But then this card lets you play another card this turn, kind of benefiting twice from Little Red Riding Hood. And maybe you want to end it with something like Bad Wolf to let her go away and not actually have to play uh, uh, or have another player get a chance at uh, getting her in front of him or her. The game also comes uh, with a couple of new victory point token. Nothing special about that. It's just obviously more victory point if you if you have more cards, more objectives, you kind of probably need more victory points in this uh, and uh, these are from... No, these are two more coins that come with this extension. See, preparation, because I... These are the same coins as from the base game. And again, probably because it just... Well, Expands more stuff more stuff to get. Um, as you might have guessed, all these cards uh, are pretty much self-contained. So they don't refer to specific base game cards or, or to, well, cards from uh, the Snow White expansion. Uh, but they still play very well together with other cards um, in regards to their other female cards. So they it refers to types, but whenever you want to do something useful, it pretty much boils down to being generic. So, for example, the, the bad wolf of uh, eating female characters and getting you victory points, but um, you get more points or a consistent income if you eat uh, Grandma and a uh, Little Red Riding Hood or something like that. Um, that's pretty much it. The game ends as with the other game, uh, as per the victory condition, or um, better said, if you run out of cards. And uh, then the game ends, um, and that's pretty much that. How was that manual that came with the game? It's that one piece of paper. <laughs> it's. I really like that they can contain all the information that we really needed on this one sheet of paper yeah this again this is uh literally just telling you look you're playing uh of uh, uh, duck now you're playing dark tales uh Ooh. and this is the only thing you have to change and it's uh pretty much just a small change in the setup uh one thing that changes with uh well, if you're playing with this as well is that everybody gets four cards to start with instead of three as i said a little bit more of everything and uh then the back side is just a little notes on the cards so how to play certain stuff or how to resolve some conflicts in in here and that covers 
pretty much everything. Um, if you're so interested, I can uh, actually go into detail for the two objective cards. As I said, this one gives you victory points for basket and coin. Also gives you victory points for basket and any other item you may hold. Uh, and again, this is in addition to the other two cards so that might be in play at this point. And the second one is uh, you have to discard two baskets to get an item of your choice or uh, you, uh, each pair of baskets you hold counts as two gold coins, which is actually pretty powerful for some of the other endgame cards that gives you victory points uh, the more uh, gold coins you hold. And that is the perfect segue into coffee. likes and dislikes. Yeah, coffee for you. Likes and dislikes for me. Um, Please. Just like uh, the base game and the first expansion, this feels very much like a part of the Dark Tales family. There's, it's like he said, more of the same thing. One thing that I um, find changes a bit with this particular expansion is the amount of victory points you can collect just because this game feels like a victory point accelerator. You add one more objective, there's it's it feels faster and uh, more victory point collecting as the um as the snow white expansion did for me but i like that there's something happening at the table and there's something happening oh. and i i do very very much like the combo uh, possibilities that you have with this particular expansion. We haven't played it in um, in combination with the Snow White yet, so I cannot speak to how that would play. But uh, I really like this one. I wouldn't go so far as to say I like it more than the Snow White expansion, but um, I, I very, very much like the combo possibilities that I felt you didn't have in the Snow White expansion as much. So that was a nice surprise there. I didn't expect that. And uh, as with all the other Dark Tales, the artwork and the format of the cards is just awesome. So it's really nice to have it on the table. Yeah, it's a, and it's, it's a play. really terrific looking game. I mean, given if you are into this art style up uh, i can totally understand if someone is offended by by that i am not i very much enjoy uh, what uh, this looks like it has this graphic dark novel or mm -hmm. kind of uh, feel Come on, she she has a tattoo how cool is that well like I, on I, the whole chest yeah but i mean there's of her villain i yeah that that kind of evokes other I like it. Other weird uh, it's like what relationship if, what, status. Yeah, what if Little Red Riding Hood wouldn't be a kid, but, uh, I don't know, a tweenie or something like that? Well. I like it. I like the art style. It's cute. It's awesome. It's well, very well executed. But you were saying, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> So, I did it again. Uh, art style, uh, something uh, I, I very much like. Uh, it uh, reminds me of. Um, uh, I forgot if the comics are uh, use the same name, but uh, the it remind if you like something like the Telltale game Wolf Among Us, which is uh, pretty much uh, set in those grim story uh, in environments with the bad wolf and all, all that stuff. I forgot what the comic is uh, called. I could be that it's also uh, Wolf Among Us, but I think it's called something else. Um, <laughs> any Anyway, uh, it's that kind of thematic thing where Little Red Riding Hood is maybe not as innocent as you might think she is, and the wolf kind of invokes or evokes some, something Mom, more than just being... She a, went to college. She is probably not a... She, I don't... I don't... I don't agree, but... 
<laughs> Anyhow, uh, in regards to gameplay, you already said it. I think this amps up, uh, actually, I also said it, uh, it amps up the, the combo possibilities a little bit more. And that is, in fact, the thing that rises the, or makes this rise above the base game and the, uh, the first expansion, Snow White, for me. I like the generic gameplay of drawing those objective cards and how, how that all comes together. And there is some... Um, way to have cards interact with each other or let's say this is the main game you having to consider how things interact with each other but it usually is the card you either have in hand or the cards that are on on the table mm. now with little red riding hood you are kind of forced into thinking not only into the card you play now but the card you play after that and how you can set up the board to keep the uh keep the multiplier in your area so so to speak so when mm -hmm. we um well that's uh, i i always glide into the gameplay experiences we can, thing i'm but, gonna remind you of that but i um i uh we we had it the way that actually the the game wasn't so much about who gets to get the highest score uh, per turn, but who gets those multipliers mm. or gets to keep those multipliers and because cards shift between players quite frequently uh, that using that. That was quite a lot of fun there. I liked that about... It's, and I didn't feel like I had that with the other um, Dark Tales. Like, either I'm, with the base game or with Snow White, I didn't feel like yeah, the, the, having that. The thing that isn't or is not uh, in here at all with any card at least i don't remember it being there is the day night cycle uh, in interaction no that comes from the base game there, that comes from the base game but theoretically or well not theoretically but uh, you discard cards at random from the base game so it could be that the game you're playing is not using the day night cycle stuff mm. very much at all um yeah, but uh, to me, the, the feel of this game is, was more about um, uh, trying to steal the point, uh, per round point cards from the opponent and trying to keep them in your area. But it's, it's, I wouldn't say it felt like, oh, no, I'm, I'm getting, uh, or, or you're stealing those cards all the time from me. It's, it's almost like... No, you like, steal them back right away, the, it's, pretty much. It, it almost feels like... Um, like a, a game where someone has the ball and you try uh, to keep, have the ball in your possession most of the time to get higher scores. That's pretty much what uh, Little Red Riding Hood is, um, which is kind of weird. Now, the, the whole connotation of her maybe being uh, an object for score multiplication is maybe... Uh, again, it might feel... It's, as as a sexist game for you, it doesn't for it me. Probably is it's fine. It's let's, a board game. Come on. Let's. Let, yeah, I. I mean, I. I would assume that there's no, um, that designing this game, there's uh, no conscious thought going in no, making a social statement. Also, you, also, this game is based on a story that made a very social statement. A couple of decades ago de so. well more like centuries but um i mean as with uh for example legendary alien you can go into the story when you play it you don't have to you can yeah. just like it for the mechanics you don't I, have to think about and have to get into character with um l r r h um you can, if you want, and if you're not offended by maybe her being more of an Slut. object than Slutty. a person, you don't have to. If you're not offended by that in this case, well, then play with the story. It's it's up I, to you, pretty much. Yeah, what I what I want to say with that is, there's uh, as with uh, the the full game, there's not much story going on. The cards are thematic through its art style, mm -hmm. and if you are so inclined, you may try to read stuff into "I am playing the Huntsman." There's little things like the Huntsman freeing Little Red Riding Hood from the bad wolf who has eaten her. 
So in the story that I read at the beginning, are you the huntsman in that story? I I, I, like I am grandma. Oh, uh, boy. I have the gray hair. I may as well be grandma. Um, no, I just wanted to point out, uh, theme doesn't get any deeper with this as it already has with the base game, but this amps up the, the gameplay. And for me, this game has always been more about really cool gameplay mm. with fancy art coming second. Um, in this case, uh, it's uh, the same thing. And uh, yeah. since this expansion, uh, again, ups the gameplay uh, a little bit, I would go so far to rate it. One, two, three. Yeah, I, okay. I I'm not surprised. I certainly recommend it if you uh, Have own... the base game. If you own Dark Tales uh, and want more Dark Tales or um, have played enough Dark Tales that you want to well, amp up Dark Tales a little bit. Um, I would almost recommend this expansion over Snow White. It it mm. depends on on what you what you want. If you just want more card variety, doing the same thing, that is kind of Snow the White. Snow White expansion. If you want cards that well change the game a little bit more, but not that much, uh, then. Little Red Riding Hood is uh, mm -hmm. yours to get. I'm I'm total in total agreement with you. Yeah, and I think that leads that us into leads funny us. stories and experiences. So yeah, as he already said, we only played it with just the two of us, yeah. and it's like a game of soccer where fir first time stealing that the ball. <laughs> first time that we played it, I didn't know what game mechanic. Little Red Riding Hood would bring with her, so I didn't have a clue that this was very combo heavy if you had the right cards. And I was so happy, like, yeah, I'm, oh, this is cool, I can do the combos. Mm. This time you're not gonna win that easily, honey, or not even at all. And I'm playing and I'm collecting victory points, and he's like, even amping up the game more, <laughs> and again. <laughs> the story from the beginning i didn't win because he like he collected i don't know victory points like little red riding hood collected flowers for her grandma so it's like a bunch that you had you were you were pretty lucky with the combo of pretty flowers uh, yeah i'm sorry pretty flowers uh, you were pr very good with the combo with the wolves. You had a lot of wolves. I just had one. And uh, I counteracted a bit with... I Or I played more with the day and nighttime conditions because I had a couple of those cards. Mm -hmm. But you were really, really lucky with having always a wolf when you needed one. Yeah, I saved them. And that sounds so Twilight. <laughs> I didn't go for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, babe. Oh. See my eyes sparkling and then the tears. <laughs> no, it's all right. Whatever. But yeah, um, I was kind of like, oh, this time I'm going to get you. And then I did mm. again. Uh, but one, I enjoyed it a lot. Since since you said that, one one thing I, I just remembered uh, about the something I also like about this is um, that uh, this expansion does not necessarily slow the game down a lot because all the cards it quickens. I thought all the cards. Well, it, it well, slows it them down because you you are th you have to think a little bit more about what you're doing, but. Um, what I like about this, there's not one card in here that has some weird uh, search the discard pile mm. for XYZ or a look at each other player's hand or something like all things that kind of tend to slow down a quick card game unnecessarily. So yeah. I, I like that they uh, add combos in here, but not a necessarily at the expense of slowing the game down yeah. unnecessarily. No, it felt way quicker than playing uh, Snow White. Yeah. And if you, I'm if, not sure if it if you, was actually if faster. you don't like uh, uh, that kind of a direction and have Snow White, you could just mix and match everything up and sort of get rid of all the cards that are have some weird look look in each other player's hand thing i i know from dominion that this can really slow down the game i think it's pretty infamously mm -hmm. uh, 
hated by a lot of players uh, the, the card that, that says is. count all the cards of your card stack or something like that i mean it's not that bad with uh dark tales uh, but no. there are some things where you get to you know, pick a card from the discard pile or where you yeah um, the, we had one the card, gypsy that card did, where you yeah look at other the pretty flowers hands. you could pick the pretty flower cards from the discard pile but there were so many in there in comparison to other cards that there was pretty much always one on top so yeah uh, but, but the flowers themselves are just for uh yeah. picking uh getting little red riding hood in front mm -hmm. of you mm -hmm. um i wasn't sure so i no, no. did that um you're so good but yeah it, i i enjoyed playing that game a lot and it felt like a dinner game to me so i would classify it as a dinner game in our household just a yeah, fifteen twenty minute um, game, which is it actually says thirty minutes. Uh, by the way, it says two to four players, thirty minutes, and uh, you have to be fourteen years or, or higher or taller to fourteen inches or taller. It's like huh? to, to play this. So what? <laughs> you have to you have to hit puberty to appreciate. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, the artwork would might not might maybe not be true. It, alike if you're 14 years you probably admire <laughs> or know that the artwork is good it Fine. adds to the game anyway um i i i felt that we played it quicker i mean it could just be oh. because you do the combos and while the I, other player plays his or her I, combo I, I think you think a, about your own i think that was a case of time felt to go by faster than it actually did because you are actually doing something yeah. you at, at least think about oh how can i make that yeah. into a combo yeah. while the other player plays the combo that there is no hmm, play a card please I'm a, uh, that's not happening at the yeah. table i think yeah and the with that you you end up with thinking uh, quite a lot okay i play this next turn then i get a little red riding hood and then i'm doing this and that mm. while other players are doing something and again in a two-player game this uh is at least to me it felt like pretty much balanced out yes. it could be in a four-player game that there's a little bit too much downtime for uh, uh those so i i would Partially say two player and three players probably this mm. week. I mean we haven't played four player with this expansion. Or uh, and the but, duck is not fourteen. He cannot play with us. But we played Dark Tales with four, and that kind of gets a little bit slow. So I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if if the expansion this, this would is not change that. Yeah. And uh, this obviously has you curse at the other player if you have something like okay, I'm I'm doing this then this okay. And then you see, and now I'm eating Little Red Riding Hood with my wolf. It's like, now I can't get her out of there without a huntsman. So it I'm also gonna... happens with two players. Yes. I can tell you it happened. Yes. More than once. Again, remember, he had the wolves. Who the ate wolves. Little... The wolves? Who... Oh, the wolves. <laughs> Who did eat Little Red Riding Hood? Wasn't me. Anyway, I think... That sums up the game. Shall we uh, tease for the new draft? Tease for initiative? Tease for initiative. Yeah, we had okay, the talk so, for initiative. Now we have the tease for initiative. So what, 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 is it, what is it going to be for your next episode of drawing the initiative for? <laughs> it's a competitive game that we have. Magic the Gathering. Chess. Here's the ultimate hint for you. I accidentally deleted footage. <laughs> and... All right. And it was my advent calendar from you last year. And it's a game that has a lot to do with both the passions that I have, meaning board gaming, because haha, <laughs> it's a board game. And sleeping, and painting. sleeping long enough. Oh, painting. I was about Art to say work. the two passions would have been at least... No, sleeping beyond nine o'clock. Sleep, sleeping and... is a need. That's not a passion. <laughs> passion is artwork and board games. You know me for a well, while now. Why don't you remember? So, which game is it? What do you think? I, if you're you're saying sleeping long, painting, talking about passion, I get a very religious vibe from from that. Uh, that me can only mean that it's a game about having an older dude in a funny hat chasing around 
and doing a thumbs up to everything you do. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up my life. <laughs> and, then, and then getting really, really angry at the market because some other idiot. <laughs> thumbs up my real up life. Remember the then, supermarket story from yeah. last weekend? It was horrible. But yeah. So it's, so it's a, a it's loony a, quest. Something like that. Where you draw and get angry. Maybe. Maybe. Did you figure out which game it was? Maybe you know, maybe you don't. It doesn't prevent the video from going up on Wednesday. 9 a.m. CET. So check it out and see if you were right or just appreciate the artwork done, maybe. And then you may despair because there will be no draw for initiative ever again. That's Forever. wrong. No, after that, we have eight weeks of the Draw for Initiative podcast. Where Who would listen to you? You can about see. Art? You could actually see Tina, you, what? and me I'm, I'm at here. a round table that is not round in eight episodes talking about board games and painting them and pretty much the journey from here to there. That sounds so Lord of the Rings. <laughs> that was not intended. <laughs> hmm. I I don't know if I should be angry about this, or not, but what did the I do? bad pun. I'm sorry. Like I said, it was not I, intended. If I'm, if I'm getting angry about a bad pun, that means something because it I means you need more of, coffee. I have the patent on bad puns. No, yeah, well, yeah kind of. Like I said, it was not intended. I, it's, yeah, it's the journey and the stories behind the scenes of behind Draw for Initiative. Of behind Draw, for... Draw for Initiative. Yeah. Not yeah. behind Pinselgeschichten. I am not the center <laughs> point of the podcast. You always we say, are. You always say the point dot 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 behind Pinselgeschichten. <laughs> I'm the artist behind Pinsel Geschichten is my company so, name. I'm so watch, my in my watch the podcast where it, it it'll discuss the journey behind Pinsel Geschichten. No, behind the artist of Pinsel Geschichten, behind Sarah, behind her husband. I hate you <laughs> right now. Behind a I'm table, getting angry. Behind a round table that is actually not round. One day I will make him understand that Pinselgeschichten is my company name. It's not the name in my passport. So, me, the person having a company, is saying I'm the artist behind the company name. Because my name is not Pinselgeschichten. My company's name is Pinselgeschichten. Whatever. <sighs> Guys. It's all right, Pinselgeschichten. <laughs> Don't get so worked up about it. Don't screw up my <laughs> outro, douchebag. <laughs> if you call me Fizzes Geschenk, I will call you douchebag. So, let's try again. <laughs> Thank you very much <laughs> for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. We will see you at uh, 9 a.m. CET on Wednesday on Draw for Initiative with a very special screw up uh, episode of the game that you maybe just guessed. And after that, you can watch us. Eight weeks of bickering and bitching and telling things and giving information and stuff on board games and painting in eight weeks of podcast. And we also keep on with the Gamers Couch. So if you prefer this format, just the two of us bickering, watch Gamers Couch next week. And we, Again. we hope that you had a great Brettspieltag. Tabletop day. Because we are certainly too late now. Maybe next year. But then you can show up and say, I now know what tabletop day is in German. Brettspieltag. German lesson of the day. Take care, guys. Have fun. See you very, very soon. Happy Goodbye. Sunday. Bye. Bye, 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 bye.